and welcome to A View from Mount Sinai, a monthly video blog series being brought to you by the Light and Health Research Center at Mount Sinai. I'm Dan Fraring. I'm going to be your host for this monthly series that brings you information about the various projects that we're doing here at the LHRC, as we call ourselves. Um, we decided to start outside our building in upstate New York, where it's about eight degrees right now. Um, so that you get a sense of where we are. Um, so why don't you come on inside and see more about what we do. So come on in. Welcome inside the, what we call the train shed. This serves as the lobby of our building. To give you a sense of where we are, we're located in what used to be a Montgomery Ward's department store and distribution center. It was built in 1929 uh, in an iconic Art Deco style. It's a beautiful building. Uh, Montgomery Ward's was housed here uh, until about 1980 uh, when the facility was closed and it was turned into offices and other facilities. Um, it's really a great facility. It's over a million square feet. Uh, it had its own railroad spur, thus the train shed. The trains would come in here. They would drop off merchandise uh, to the facility to be sold in this store or distributed by catalog throughout the Northeast United States. So we're very pleased to be here in a historic building. Um, uh, so why don't we go upstairs and you can see where the Light and Health Research Center laboratories are located. So for those of you not familiar with us, I just want to tell you a little bit about the Light and Health Research Center. We were founded at Mount Sinai here in 2020 uh, by faculty and staff who originally worked for the Lighting Research Center at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Uh, we were located there for over 30 years. So we have a long history of doing lighting research. Um, we have facilities both here uh, in Menans, New York, upstate New York, which is uh, what we'll tour here on this video, as well as facilities down in New York City on the main campus of Mount Sinai. This allows us to do different types of work in different areas, and especially when you're looking at uh, human subject research, it gives us a large uh, pool of people that we can draw from for the research that we're doing. So we have staff in both locations. Our director goes back and forth between the locations. So welcome to the Light and Health Research Center facilities. We took the elevator up to the fifth floor. You'll see that we're under construction. You can see behind me that we have some of the lighting fixtures installed, some of that are not installed, but we'll show you around the space just so you can get a sense of um, what the different types of spaces are and what we'll be doing in each of the laboratories. So come on through. Look, a well-lighted empty room. Um, that's what's interesting about research laboratories. If an experiment actually isn't going on, everything's just kind of an empty room. But I'll give you a sense of what we do in here. Um, at the Light and Health Research Centers, we often do studies that have to do with sleep or nighttime performance. So this is a room that can be totally darkened. The lights can be turned off, or we could put in other lighting that might have different characteristics, different spectrum, different intensities, uh, uh, different distributions uh, to test how these might affect um, either human performance or, or certain uh, health markers that we might be collecting. So this is a very flexible space. There'll be tables, there'll be chairs that'll be set up. Sometimes there might be beds where people are spending time overnight here. Um, and then we might be collecting biomarkers from them, either in saliva or even blood, so that we can measure things like melatonin um, concentration and those type of things. So a really nice space uh, to be able to do that type of work. So welcome to our photometric laboratories. Um, as you'll see in a second as I walk through, half of 
it is painted mainly white, half of it is pain, painted black. Um, in this half, we'll be able to do a range of different types of experiments that um, don't necessarily have to be in total darkness. Um, although again, you can see in this room, we have no windows. To my left, you'll see a very large integrating sphere. This is one of our pieces of photometric equipment that we use. It's, it's split in half right now. This is uh, the largest one. The reason that it's in here is because once the doors were finished, we wouldn't have been able to get it in. Um, so it's just sitting here right now, waiting to be set up, but that will be one of the pieces of equipment that we'll have. We'll also have gonio photometric uh, capabilities. Um, as those of you who know um, our history, uh, the photometric measurement is really one of our core capabilities here. So we have uh, a lot of equipment capabilities, a lot of personal capabilities to be able to take measurements, um, both light as well as UV, infrared, uh, throughout the spectrum um, and take very exacting measurements, which is important to research. Uh, you can see in this half of the laboratory, uh, this is the black lab as we'll call it. Uh, that's uh, an inventive name. You can see that there are curtains between each of the sections. We can cordon them off so we may be able to do, for example, a nighttime research uh, laboratory study there. Um, one of the studies that we're beginning now is looking at emergency lighting, lighting on emergency vehicles and trying to improve the safety of those. Typically when we do that type of work, we start with a laboratory experiment. Uh, so that will likely be set up here. We look at different principles like again, intensity, um, amount of light, so that we can then uh, see how that reacts in the lab and then take that out into the field, into the real world and see how people people react to it. One of the laboratories in our facility that we actually have set up is our immunoassay uh, laboratory facilities. In this room, we can perform different types of assays on, for example, blood, urine, uh, saliva, we can look at melatonin concentrations, cortisol, other hormones. Come on in. You Don't be scared by the sign on the door which scares all visitors because it says radioactive um, because some of the equipment uses a small amount of radiation. Um, so we have different types of equipment that can do these type of biological assays, uh, both for our research and we're looking to expand that uh, to assist other researchers at Mount Sinai as well. We also here have a, a large storage facility with freezers so that we can uh, store vi biological specimens for analysis later if we have to do that as well. So right across from the assay lab is what is will be our plant laboratory. You can see this well-lit white space. Come on in. Um, for those of you who follow the research that we do, a lot of the work we do uh, most recently within the last three or four years has to do with combating plant diseases, uh, mainly using ultraviolet uh, light or radiation. Uh, so what we often will do again is we'll do small experimentation in the lab where we might set up tomato plants or basil plants or we've grown squash plants uh, in the lab as well, test different uh, techniques which then go out into the field. So this will certainly be research that we're talking more about, but this is a small laboratory that we have set up that allows us to isolate those type of experiments um, and perform them um, correctly uh, in a controlled environment. So obviously one of the things that we need in our facility are offices for our research and faculty. Uh, we inherited this building and we reconfigured a lot of it, but some of it we saved from the old configuration. So in a rather old fashioned way, you'll see that the space is ringed by private offices. Now that's great for the people in the offices. It does kind of limit the daylight to the central core. Um, But this is our director's office. Actually, um, Mariana Figueroa, who you'll meet later in this episode, um, will, she sits here. She spends half of her time in New York City at our site there, um, half of her time up here. She shares the office with uh, one of our faculty, Dr. Mark Ray. And I have to say, um, if you had to pick an office, this is certainly the office uh, that you would pick. It has a great view. It has great daylight. Um, so they're uh, very lucky to have this, although I like my office too.
So there's one last space I want to show you here at the Light and Health Research Center. Think about visiting a relative or friend's house. What's the one space you want to really look at to get to know them? Of course, their closets, because then you can see how neat and tidy they are. So we're going to show you our closet and show you where all of the stuff that is in those empty rooms that isn't, I should say, isn't in those empty rooms uh, is being stored right now. So come on in. You can see we have a lot of lighting testing equipment that is uh, being stored here right now. Uh, different cubicles that we use for human factors research. Over here you see some of the lighting that we use uh, for field studies. These are lighting fixtures that we use to provide light uh, for a study we did with people with Alzheimer's disease. So those had an occupancy sensor, they would be set up um, in people's homes or in a, in a long-term care facility to provide light to them. As you can see, we still have paper. I uh, have a lot of filing cabinets. This is actually uh, an original collection from Ohio State University um, of lighting research that we inherited uh, when we founded our center. Light tables that we use for some of the uh, research with Alzheimer's patients. Um, you can see small integrating spheres that we've used for some of our research. These are desktop luminaires that we're actually beginning to use now. There's going to be a research study that's going to start next week looking at the effects of red and white light um, on things like alertness and biomarkers. We did actually have to set up one laboratory, so we are currently working. We're taking measurements and you can see uh, so we do have some working space within our closet, our storage facility, um, where we are still taking measurements um, of different light fixtures because the work of the Light and Health Research Center never stops. We have to continue our research on even through uh, construction. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed our tour so far. Um, we've come back to one of the offices and I'm here now with Dr. Mar Mariana Figueroa, the director of the LHRC, and we're gonna grill her with a few questions oh. to, to end our, our video blog today. So first, um, I'm sure you've been asked this a hundred times, uh, if not more, um, why the move from RPI to Mount Sinai? Oh, it's the first time I'm getting that question. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, um, I think it was an obvious sort of progress of the work that we've been doing at the LRC, that we had been doing at the LRC. We had expended a lot on the health-related projects and having access to the clinical population and being associated with a medical school was extremely important for us to move to the next uh, 30 years of uh, our center. Oh, 30 more years. I don't think I'll work here 30 more years, but I don't maybe know if you I will. will either, You're young but... enough, I'm not. Um, so have you found that we've been here over a year now, at least you have, you've been here well over a year. Um, have you found that those benefits have uh, actually happened? We... Absolutely, it's, uh, the, the, the opportunities are absolutely amazing. I mean, we, we have made great collaborations. First of all, an amazing group of people to work with. Everybody interested in lighting. Everybody actually believes in what we're doing and want to include what we're doing in what they are doing. So we have expanded the opportunities in the clinical applications and the collaborations and the proposal writing. It's been absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, I've been here six months and I've really enjoyed it. So uh, it's yeah. always good to start something new, yes. um, especially our new building that uh, everyone has seen already. Um, so we have two locations. Um, New York City and here, that's definitely new for us. Um, I think you probably have frequent flyer miles on Amtrak, if there is such a thing. Um, how do you think that's working out, having two sites? Well, obviously with a pandemic, it's hard to say, um, but I do think it's gonna work out. We're gonna try to see if we have people from upstate to come down uh, to downstate and vice versa, because we have right now three people working downstate and we may have a couple more that they can come up and stay here also. Um, and we have our nine o'clock meetings uh, every morning, so it's almost like everybody's used to having remote meetings anyway. So I think it's working out really well. Yeah, everyone's used to Zoom. We're Zoom aficionados That's right. now. That's right, that's right. Um, so what are you most looking forward to for 2022 for the LHRC? I think getting back to uh, normal. Normal, I think everybody wants to get back to normal. For yeah. us, it's actually double. Uh, it's not just getting back to normal due, the, due to the pandemic, but getting back to normal on collecting data, having the lab set up, um, 
um, you know, bringing in subjects again, and I think expanding, expanding the collaborations and the work that we, uh, we are doing down there. Um, so I, I think the opportunities are amazing for next year and the next at least uh, 5, 10, 20, 30 years. 30 years. Wow. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mariana, very much. Thank you. Um, and good luck with the blog. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for joining us for our first installment of what we see as a monthly series of View from Mount Sinai, a video blog that's going to talk about uh, the various types of research that we do both within the LHRC as well as with partners from outside. So we hope you can join us uh, for future episodes. They'll be released about mid-month each month. Uh, through the Lighting Agora. So stay tuned, uh, bookmark that um, uh, on your internet browser um, and you can join us each month. Thank you.